is Eddie Tofpik. I'm Head of Technical Analysis and Senior Markets Analyst at ADM Investor Services International Limited. Here is your daily technical analysis of foreign exchange markets. I'll start with the euro against the dollar. Yes, they saw an interesting combined key reversal up, if only just, but also a bullish harami as well. This coming as it does on the recent lows of the market. The reason for this bullish action is fairly obvious. The previously mentioned significant 50% Fibonacci line of the June 2020 to January 2021 move at 1758. That's 11758. It does not mean the end of the decline, at least not yet. It means the market has met, as I've already pointed out, a significant support. And this is a first reaction. You see, overall, we continue to slide down just above the middle time currently at 1.1704 of the January to May bearish Andrews pitchfork. This pitchfork has taken on the mantle of the bearish angle of attack uh, right now. The other feature I've highlighted is the mid-June to date descending wedge pattern. That continues to be pacing the market lower between the downtrend currently at 1.1820 and the lower trend line that is almost parallel with the middle time currently at 1.1724. Now, wedge patterns can break in either direction, but they have something like a 70% chance of breaking higher, so bear that in mind. I can't give any targets as yet, but I can give an idea of the size of the move when it happens. An up upwards break would be about 135 ticks on top of the broken downtrend. A downwards break would be about 65 ticks off of the broken lower trend line. The descending wedge terminates in early September, but I imagine we'll have a break before then. One final point, beware of false breaks with this wedge, and wedges generally, they are really quite common, so please treat all attempted moves with caution. So far today, not much, a seeming indecisive doji cross right now, based around yesterday's close. Seemingly watching and waiting. Cable, aka sterling against the US dollar. A reactionary, a reactionary bullish white soldier yesterday, this despite the market making two consecutive closes under the nearby rising long moving average, currently 137.16. Indeed, the move higher breached the long moving average and closed right on it. This has halted, if not completely eliminated, the idea of the move down since the start of June as a possible bearish measured move lower with a potential target X in the 134 and a quarter area. It also halts the further idea I put forward last month of a possible very large Adam and Eve type double top formed over the whole of this year. Yet this latter idea is still available because as I recently mentioned only a confirmed second consecutive close below the interesting 61.8% Fibonacci line of the whole of the 2016 action at 136.54, which looks like an ad hoc neckline, would help this idea a lot. And we've only so far had the one close below. Finally, I would remind you all about my words from earlier this week on how this was the first challenge to the long moving average in September 2020. Please note that challenge back then, in September last year, was unsuccessful. Now, so far today, a further move higher. Back up over the long moving average, but we seem to have run into some indecision now uh, as we prices have moved backwards and forwards. And there's a possibility, possibility still, still of a faint one of a long moving average may become an attractor for the market, but we'll still keep an eye on that. Euro sterling. A counter to the recent bullishness yesterday with a bearish engulfing pattern that punched down through the medium moving average, currently 86.02 if only just, and then close below it, if only just. This specifically counters in whole or part Tuesday's second consecutive close over all of the following. The top of the May to date based bear channel, currently 84.83 to 85.71. The descending me medium moving average and its partner since mid-June, the short medium moving average, currently at 85.88. Now, the original move higher was a reaction to the market recently getting closer to the support at 84.69. Please note this support had originally halted the decline back in April. And today has already actually managed to set in place, well, yesterday, today, and yesterday. 
are set in place with just over a week to go for July to be a possible monthly key reversal. Let that sink in for a bit. Meanwhile overhead, well, we have the next resistance, the April 2020 low at 86.69, which halted the rise this week. And so far today, a really interesting follow on lower to yesterday's bearish engulfing pattern. Prices opened below the medium moving average, hesitated around it, and then dropped down through the short medium moving average all the way down to the broken upper bear channel line and its new partner this week, the short moving average, currently 85.73. This almost brings us back to where we started the week and asks, and really asks the question, was the move up an aberration? US dollar against the Indian rupee. A really interesting two day pattern yesterday, a bearish inverted hammer pattern. Now I know you may think that hammer patterns are bullish and you'd be generally right. However, the bearish inverted hammer pattern is a two-day pattern and it needs a strong bearish black marabozo on the first day, which we did with an immediate countering bearish engulfing pattern and bearish closing long black marabozo on Tuesday. Then it's followed by the inverted hammer pattern yesterday. Now this is where we get to the interesting bit. Traditionally, inverted hammer patterns are seen as bullish reversals. However, the data suggests differently. Nearly 7 out of 10 times these occur, we have a bearish continuation. This action also helped clarify another pattern that was running around in my mind, that the mid-June to June, mid -June to date action is in fact an ascending broadening wedge pattern, with the lower trend line being the very recent uptrend, currently at 74.48, and the upper trend line being very acute and currently at 75.71. The one other thing to note from yesterday was the short moving average currently at 74.54. I had previously noted that the short moving average seemed to be acting as a dynamic support level last week and now this week. Well yesterday the market closed below the short moving average for the first time since early June. That's right, since early June. Looking elsewhere, we also had a second close back below the 50% Fibonacci line of the April 2020 to February 2021 move at 74.63. Meanwhile, further below, we still have the support from the 50% Fibonacci line of the February to April 2020 move at 74.26. Now, so far today, a gapping lower open since filled below the lower trend line of the ascending broadening wedge pattern and the drop almost to the 50% Fibonacci line at 74.26 before a pullback up to just under the broken trend line and looking like an indecisive doji cross right now. If this break to the lower trend line is confirmed and it's still early whether that's going to happen then we'll have to start looking at targets below. However please note wedge patterns of all types are very prone to false breaks. US dollar against the Brazilian real. A second lower bearish black crow yesterday. The move pushed the market back below the breached descending upper time currently at 521.97 of the newly drawn bearish Andrews pitchfork for the action from late May to early July. Still makes me wonder if this pitchfork will actually last this week with such a move. However, prices did close back below the upper time and a significant way towards the next supports below and that's of the flat lining short medium moving average currently at 514.14 and the rising short moving average currently 514.13. Normally I would not mention the short moving average but it played an invaluable role in halting and turning the market back up last week. So there. Overall we still have the argument I outlined last week uh, for the late June today action being a bull flag but for me it is early as yet. You see you could as easily argue the July action as a double top so all it needs is time. This all is in the shadow of the remarkable number of dead crosses we've seen since late May in this market. It all now depends on whether the bearish Andrews picture will reassert its hold. Well, beyond that, on the top side we have the declining medium moving average currently 533.72 and the long moving average currently at 535.79 now entering the frame. 
US dollar against the Mexican peso. An indecisive spinning top yesterday. I suppose it's not that surprising as the market rose up to a new July high, but backed off as by doing so prices had become enmeshed within the declining overhead resistances of the medium moving average currently at 20.1265 and the long moving average currently 20.1880 closing under or just under both and lower on the day. This resurfaces the extensive indecision we had seen in the market, uh, indecision that stretches from the fall back to levels originally seen in mid-April, but which recently started again in late June. As recently as yesterday, it indicated the possible beginning of a try higher. Uh, overall, the adherence of the market to the neckline of the February to March head and shoulders top, currently at 1987 and a quarter is still indicative of this neckline acting as an attractor to the market. But below we have the April to May based congestion zone between 1985 to 1995 with the neckline lower still currently at 1960-90 of the late January to mid-May head and shoulders top acting as further support. So far today, well not that much really. The market seems to be following the declining move, medium moving average lower but with prices either side of, of the moving average. Thank you for listening. This short version broadcast gives you essential market patterns and consequences. Please be aware of the risk disclaimer posted with this broadcast. Copyright is Eddie Topic and ADM Investor Service International Limited. And here comes the final bit.